show you guys. And you guys can talk to him if you want to ask him questions. You can do whatever you want. I have been here. You have? I have. Good. I've been around the world. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can see. Hey there. You guys are Good morning, everybody. This is, this I'm is Dominic here. Phillips, and I'll be out here in Hawaii today. Oops. There's a glitch with that. Dominic, can you uh, unmute? Oh, I think he muted. Oh, look at that. I, I, was, I was clearing my throat before the big introduction. <laughs> Go ahead. And, Hit it again. And this camera has a lot of buttons. <laughs> hey there. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dominic Phillips, and I'm out here in South Kohala on the big island of Hawaii. And we are just going to be doing a little beach combing and walking down the shoreline here. And we are here for you guys, so if you have any questions, anything you want to see, um, just you can have people chat online or, or just yell out your questions to, you know, through John here, and I'll try to field, uh, uh, field anything. Again, I'm just out here as a tourist, so I'm not a big Hawaii expert, but hopefully we'll see some turtles, keep our eyes out for some whales, and, and just uh, some other interesting beach combing stuff this morning. Mm -hmm. Now I get to see it again. Excellent. Well, just, uh, oh, what a scene. Hey, I've seen it too. Um, oh, why don't we just see people Look how pretty. Oh, that's so, so as you guys see, the sun is just rising, um, or at least coming over the... Uh, from the eastern side of the island. Uh, since we're in Hawaii, we do not um, participate in daylight savings time. So it is a little earlier this week than it was last week. That's why God made coffee. <laughs> now, Puko is a reef area. So you'll see we're on a lot of black lava reef. Um, and in fact, just offshore is some of what I think is the best snorkeling on the island. Oh, that's beautiful. I'll be watching. You're talking to the retreat at Sun River in Utah. At Sun River, all right. Utah, well, I, I, I live just in, in Colorado normally, so, so I, I'm escaping the weather that, that we have back there. <laughs> Last week, Dominic found some turtles and quite a bit of wildlife. So we'll see how he how he does this time. Well, we we will. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and make the promise right now that we will see some turtles this morning. Um, we are also keeping our eye on the horizon. Uh, it's it's humpback whale season, or it's actually just at the very end of humpback whale season. And yesterday afternoon, and I put a little photo up, and I'm going to keep my eye out because we're going to be walking in this direction here. But yesterday afternoon, way out on the horizon here, we had two calf whales uh, that were playing and breaching, and it looked like they were hanging out with their mom. Oh, cool. So we will keep our fingers crossed uh, to see them this morning. You know, and if we do see them, they'll probably just be little specks out there. But we will get a little closer. Now, we've tried to do uh, walks from Puaco before, but we haven't, uh, haven't had this good of a timing with the tide yet. Uh, so the tide right now is about as low as it's going to get. Uh, actually, I think we have maybe another half hour of the tide going out. And what that does is that gives us the opportunity to find all sorts of these little tide pools. <clears throat> and you'll have to bear with me as I get the tripod kind of set up. But as we see here, this is a nice little, uh, little pool that's been separated from the rest of the ocean, which you can see here has a much higher level right now. So as we go along, you know, this time we can actually walk down the beach, whereas last time we were uh, a little bit underwater and had to go across the bay 
which is a walk that we do often as well, which is Waialea. So that is that is a beach here. We have Hapuna, which is also a big uh, uh, surf and boogie board spot. Uh, it's it's normally one of the top five beaches in the nation each year. You're doing the boogie boards, yeah. So I'm switching back and forth. So I'll just mute. So now you can see for, from this area, um, when the tide does roll in, except for the black lava, we get what will eventually be sort of crushed into, into some sand, but all of this is just tumbled coral from the reef. So if we look at this, and I'll go down and, and grab a piece here that, that isn't quite yet bleached out from the sun. And when it rolls up, we'll have all sorts of nice colors. Wow, that is cool. So now this guy will will retain his his color for no more than just a couple days, because uh, once they're out here, as you can see, it all just get bleached. It, it gets bleached down and tumbled down. And as we go, I'm, I'm taking some photos, and we'll put those up after, uh, after everything's, uh, after the walk is done, we'll get those up on the, uh, the website for you. And uh, hopefully if there's, there's something we can see with a little more detail, although we're, we're pretty darn good with our, with our signal here. You know, again, we're using a, a Verizon Jetpack that uh, I just have in my backpack here, and we'll pop that out maybe here in a little bit. Uh, and we have down here our first turtle of the morning. Oh, neat. Now, again, these guys are uh, an endangered species. There he is. And they, and they are protected. So we can see this guy starting to move into the tide pool. Oh, and there's actually a second one in there. Now the reason this is a is a good spot for for turtle spotting, as you see when I turn, and here's our our second turtle. So these guys are here for the day. You wouldn't believe how clear that is, too. It's really good. Well, excellent. We'll and we'll try and pop up and you know I'll try and work with the reflections here and get some good some good shots but as you can see these turtles are cut off from the ocean and will be uh, let's see for about I would say four more hours and we can see the surf it's not too far away at all But the turtles don't really mind so much. Uh, a turtle's life is uh, is pretty pretty relaxing. <laughs> I could, I could like they eat a lot. There. I could sit in there with a good book for a couple of hours. Oh yeah, there there, there are a uh, a couple of tide pools uh, that we're we're going to be making our way to that that are some of my favorites. Um, like I said, the it's it's great snorkeling uh, right on the. Uh, about 50 yards out in the water here. I will just watch these guys for a little bit if I can get my tripod to play along. So yeah, after uh, after a nice couple hours of uh, snorkeling, it's really nice to uh, sit down in a tide pool and relax for a little bit. Just the tripod here, and we will give 
get a little closer to this guy. Now they are protected, uh, so we don't, you know, we don't harass the turtles, and we definitely don't touch the turtles. We'll see if we can get just a little better view. Of oh, nice, yeah, this guy. So are they, are they normally always there in the morning uh, when you go? You know, these guys uh, in, in Puaco, um this is kind of like a nice little turtle haven. Uh, so I think I've only ever been here one time when I haven't seen turtles. Wow. So this is, this is an excellent, and, and you know, I said we had, we had two that were playing around here, but now that I'm over here, we actually have a third one. Oh, I see him up there. Oh, yeah? Hanging right there. He is 58. He did an amazing <laughs> a good job of arranging this, Tommy. Well, excellent. I'm glad, uh, you know, I'm glad you guys were able to make it. Yeah, this is one of my favorite spots. What part of the uh, island are you on right now? Well, uh, I am on in the uh, South Kohala coast, which is on the Kona side. So I'm on the uh, the west side of the island, and we're north. Cool. Well, he's just picking his head up. Yeah, we get some little little flippers, and, you know, when you're out here with your camera, you try to time the, the turtle breaths. <laughs> so you wait for one of them to, uh, to take a breath. And, uh, you know, normally if they're active, within every, you know, three to maybe five minutes, they'll pop their head up and take a breath, um, but they can dive for up to 30 minutes at a time. So when they're out in the ocean, um, they can really, you'll sometimes see one sleeping down on the, uh, on the bottom of the, on the ocean. And this guy, we're going to give him a little extra room, but we can also see him right on my shadow there. In fact, I can point to him like that. Looks like a rock. Looks just like a rock. He, he does. Um, you know, and in fact, this guy, you know, he's been out of the water. He's probably only been up here for maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes or so. But when they when they come out of the water like that, and they'll just sleep on the beach, um, their shell becomes very, very uh, dry and almost sand-like in color. <laughs> so uh, sometimes if you have your eye on the horizon, uh, what we'll, we'll be doing as we get a little further down here, um, you know, you'll be looking for whales and almost trip on a turtle. So you have to be <laughs> very, uh, very wary of where the turtles are. Yeah, so we are going to pop up and into the woods here, and back up and around. Oh, you get some great lens flare effects there. Yeah, yeah the sun is, like I said, just, you know, fully over the mountain now. Uh, it rose, let's see, on my drive here, over uh, Mauna Kea. So now we have, you know, an area of, of groves, which we'll see all sorts of little nooks just off of the ocean here. And we can see trees that have been toppled, and uh, as we go down, we'll see all sorts of tree that's, that has uh, washed up in the area. Now this is definitely, you know, it gives you a, a nice little habitat for uh, birding. I like to, I like to uh, photograph birds and wildlife myself. So these are, uh, you know, it gives you a wide variety of species down by the beach. But then even up here, you see, we have coral that's been washed and thrown for about, oh, a good 60 feet from the beach. Wow. 
Must be a tsunami yeah. or something. Well, you know, I was just going to say, uh, three years ago, on, oh, I think it, I think it was Saturday, three years ago, uh, the tsunami that uh, devastated Japan actually made ground on the Big Island. So we didn't have too much damage, and this area, thankfully, was, uh, was pretty well protected. But we have some areas uh, down south um, in Kona Town, so downtown. Uh, they had major flooding. Uh, they had some, uh, the Kona Inn, which is a bar uh, downtown. They had a big 22-foot-long wooden bar that was lifted up and moved down. Um, had lots of damage, but, but thankfully I don't think uh, anyone on Hawaii uh, was, was hurt. But they did have one house that was lifted up and, and moved uh, into the ocean. Oh. Wow. So now what, what we're looking at here, uh, this is one of the public access ways. So all of the beaches in Hawaii are public land. So you can walk down shore as long as you want to, and you're not trespassing. Um, but the only trick is getting to the beach uh, by, by public land. So Puoko is great because they have, they have these little trails probably every couple of hundred yards. Uh, some places you have to walk miles to get to the good spots. <laughs> I'll show you. Just have a nice little beach chair right there. Yeah, this is this is my morning setup here. <laughs> it's uh, I'll I'll show you the view from the chair here. Beautiful. Oh, that's nice. Have you been to Hawaii, Helen? Yeah, no. Have you been to Hawaii? This is what it looks like. Beautiful and lots of lava rock. Hmm. Been there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in, in the sand here, and we'll be making our way left. And uh, I already see one big tour boat out on the ocean. Uh, but like I said, we're going to keep our fingers crossed for maybe some splashes off on the horizon here. So I mentioned the tide pools that I like to kind of sit in. That would be these right here. About what's the water temperature right there? Would you say? B13. Well, the reason the reason that I like this area here is because since it's shallow and it has a little bit of a, a natural break here, um, the sun heats this up a little bit more. I think the water temperature is 70s, so I think low 70s. A little chilly. But it's still there. A little chilly. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely not, um, you know, when you think of, like, Caribbean water or, like, something that's, like, bath water, uh, it's definitely not that. <laughs> okay. In, fact, in fact, when I, when I go out here, I have to wear a, uh, a little bit of a dive suit normally, because mm -hmm. otherwise I get out there and I start shivering a little bit. Uh, okay. Now, some of, the, some of the weather conditions, because it is winter out here, uh, so these are our winter conditions, which mean a couple different things, uh, one of which, this is the wavy season right now. So, in fact, right now, it's, it's pretty darn calm right now, um, but in between sets, even now, we'll have two and three foot waves breaking right off here. In fact, we have some larger ones there to our left. But if you come out during summer, um, it's, it's like a plane of glass out here. So the, the waves are really, really light. And the water is probably a 
couple degrees warmer uh, during the during the summertime as well. Did you uh, see the shot the fella got of the great white uh, whale breaking? Oh, you know, I heard about that, but but I, I have not seen it. One in a one in a million. Moby Dick couldn't sell. Wow. wow. So we're gonna hope we. Uh, so I, I don't want to put any pressure on you, Dominic, but that's what no, I'm no doing. pressure, <laughs> no pressure. We'll keep our eyes on the on the horizon there, <laughs> so we can see another turtle here in the. Oh, looks like he's he's just going out to sea here. So with with the turtles, um, if you can see out where the waves start to break, up here on the left. All the way out there and extending uh, pretty much the whole length uh, of this coast is a great big reef. So if you go out there, it is just a, a carpet of just beautiful colored corals and fish. Um, and then the turtles will actually go out there and be cleaned by the fish. So you'll see a turtle just kind of floating along there. And it's got a whole school of fish, and they're just pecking at his shell. And they're picking off all of the algae and the plants um, that, have, uh, uh, that have fastened themselves there since the last turtle cleaning. So it's kind of a nice, uh, a nice relationship the turtles have with the fish. That's pretty. I've never heard it. No, Okay, you're five off. Oh, 71. 71. B3. Oh, and now I'm, I'm, wearing my, I'm wearing my booties out here. Because one, we're lo walking on lava rock. And but also, we've pointed these guys out before, we have little bitty crustaceans. So those are all little bitty little bitty clams that they open up and they have uh, quite a little quite a little pony edge on them there. Yeah, you wouldn't want to step on that, huh? You see the little clam? So I have some, some cousins that are, that are Boy Scouts over on Oahu, and when they come out, it's always interesting because they show me what's all edible and what isn't. <laughs> so they're picking stuff off the rocks and eating it, and uh, I have to say I've been surprised that some of it's been good. Oh, really? I, it, I sea urchins, random clams, things like that. Uh, you know, you definitely have to know what you're looking for. That's pretty neat. Here's another little little cove. This is actually one that I like to, when the tide is out, I'll come and set up the chairs here. That's some great stone castles one day, don't it? Yeah. There's there's good good sand castle sand. Well, you know, probably the best is is back at Wailea. There's some great sand castle sand there. We're just gonna meet for a second. Okay, yeah, sure. Now we'll see if we can get a nice long shot here. It's just just starting to clear up a little bit on the horizon. And if we can see it, I will point out so just under that cloud, which we've mm -hmm. talked about this, this is how this is how kind of the weather here forms. But we can see a little line right here, and that is the edge of the island of Maui. So that over there is the next, I think, biggest island, and it's the closest island, you know, to the island of Hawaii. So we can look over and see our neighbors on a clear day. 
but more often than not, what happens is, uh, as the sun heats everything up, and the air that's on top of the island rises, it pulls all of the moisture in from the ocean, which lifts it up, and then it turns into clouds. So that's how we get, that's how we get all of our tropical rain, uh, as well as our tropical weather. And if you've ever seen all the cartoons that have the, the island volcano that has the clouds on top of it, well, that, there, there's a scientific reason for that. What beach combing, Dominic? Have you found much interesting stuff swept in by the ocean? You know, there, there's always beautiful corals, um, you know, which, which all of the coral, pe coral pieces, you know, I, I try to leave alone. You know, some people, I think, uh, have little collections or things like that, but I always try to uh, uh, just try to experience it and, uh, you know, take photos. <laughs> Uh, now, out in the uh, out in the uh, reef there, you know, occasionally you can find uh, some beautiful shells. Uh, normally, by the time that they they make it up here, though, the the shells are are in pretty bad condition. But you know, one thing about Hawaii is there's not much. Um, close to us here. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get a, a little bit of stuff, um, and you'll see people that have the, uh, the gold detectors and metal detectors, and they'll be looking for uh, lost items. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people wear, wear too much out into the ocean, and then the ocean takes it off for them. <laughs> Watches, things like that. Yeah, down in the Caribbean, you can really find some... Uh Cannonballs and gold coins and odds and ends. Oh yeah, you. yeah, definitely a, a a a rich history down there in boating. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, Captain yeah. Cook didn't make it out here until I think it was the uh, the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, they they get pretty ex excited in the islands after a big storm, a really big one, because it uncovers things that have been previously hidden and uh, all the all the treasure hunters really get uh, aggressive after a big storm oh yeah yeah because there, there's a lot of money still sitting on those reefs oh yeah oh yeah I think you know every couple of years you, you always hear about you know some new shipwreck with with gold coins that they had found I'm keeping an eye on the horizon out here, and I'm not sure if it's just a little bit of a swell or if we we have a, a whale or two out there. So we'll keep Pretty looking at as we... Yeah. It's a lovely view, though. Yeah, Yeah, this spot I, I come out a lot and sit out on the, the point a little bit further to our left, and uh, I'll watch for the whales. Uh, the reason that this is a good spot here, um, and normally you'll find the uh, the mothers or the nurses with with their calves in here, is because this area is kind of a a low shelf, so it's shallower water, um, so the mamas. And the nurse, uh, they don't have to worry quite as much about the calf whales. And if we do see them, sometimes you'll see them flapping, flapping their flippers, um, jumping around. And so they're learning territorial behavior. Um, and they're playing, but those are skills that they will use later on when they have to stake out their territory. We would have had two other... Uh nursing homes in here today and uh, and technology centers but uh, Buffalo got hit by a huge uh, snowstorm so those people couldn't join us today which is very disappointing because they were going to decorate their lounge in a Hawaiian theme. <laughs> I, I heard about that. I, I, I know. I feel, I feel bad. I'm so disappointed, yeah. 
Oh, so well. these guys, if you can make out, this is also a reason why you want to pick your lines, <clears throat> your walking lines, very carefully. Because um, if you can see and make out, a oh, little fish swimming by, that we have all sorts of little urchins in here. Can you make out all those those spiky points down there? Where's your shot? So i definitely not going to... Not going to touch them because they have all sorts of fun bacteria on them. And uh, I've heard they can also leave little stickers in you that are, that are really tough to get out. But uh, you'll see that they are, you know, sometimes they blanket the area. So there's probably dozens and dozens of them in here. And we see a whole bunch of white ones, but then... He kind of just looks like a shadow down in there, but there's also black urchins. I'll get a couple of shots with the camera of these guys here. I had a run in with some fire coral once, and that was uh, enough to make you be more careful when you die. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, that is, that is one rule uh, that I normally have when, when I'm out there snorkeling. Oh, we got a little rainbow just starting off the side of Maui here. Um, but I, I always make sure I, I, I keep my hands off. Fire coral goes away in about four days if you treat it, and then goes away in about four days if you don't treat it. So. Uh, <laughs> so, whether you do or you don't, huh? Yeah, it's <laughs> Focuses the mind to be more careful. I'm grab a couple of shots of our uh, little bit of a rainbow out that way. Hmm. Look at the. Do you see the rainbow out there by the clouds? I'll pass. Oh. Laser. A lot of times, you know, we try to we try to cover a whole bunch of ground at, at once, and uh, you know, today I think it's a little bit more of a taking our time and 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 seeing what we see along our walk this morning. You got to find some message in a bottle or something like that. Yep. <laughs> Gold coins. Oh, see, as we get out, a whole Somebody, bunch of fish here. Somebody's Rolex watch that came off or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might see some, some splashes in, in these areas here. And those are from, from some flying fish that are, are hopping from, from spot to spot. Oh. Yeah, they fly. <laughs> Now these guys, these are just the little ones, um, and you'll get a lot of the littler, of the smaller versions of the fish that hang out in the reef areas. But when you're uh, when you're out on the water, these schools of fish, you know, sometimes there'll be maybe five of them, sometimes it'll be thirty or forty of them, at one time will jump out, and you can see their little wings spread, and uh, you know they fly for for. 20 to maybe 40 feet at a time. Holy wow. cow! Yeah, so it's uh, it's it, it it's a little crazy to watch. But I found out that the flying fish, uh, that's where we get row that people do on top of sushi. So the flying uh -huh. fish eggs is uh, one of the ingredients. I've had that before. I had no idea that's what it was. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I had it a number of times, and then, you know, one guy that, that was uh, taking us out on a boat uh, just told us that uh, that's what we're eating. <laughs> so, if any, so if any of them ever pop into the, uh, <laughs> pop into the boat, we're good for lunch. Oh, yeah. 
People pay good money for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Sushi. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're on board with me for the sushi for lunch thing. No. No. I hear you. It's... It's an acquired taste, and, and I'm, I'm still, I go for the tamest of the sushi. And I, while I'm popping around here, I'm just hopping from, from well, peak you, to peak here. Watch your step, buddy. Oh, yes. All right, here's our, here's the one jump. All right. You suddenly get a close-up of the rocks. We know it's your face. Hey, right yeah, there. yeah, I've, I've, uh. It's gone through my head many times. <laughs> so here, you know, once, we, once we've reached the, this point, um, you know, we have, uh, some people have vacation homes, uh, some people have the permanent homes here. But uh, along the, the sandy areas, sometimes we'll see some turtles uh, that have pulled all the way up for the evening, or, well, for, for their morning. Uh, but to take a nice long nap. And when I was in Costa Rica, they they called them the turtle police, and the police would drive down on the beach in their police cars and uh, actually patrol, looking for turtles to uh, help them get back into the ocean and and guard their eggs. And they would uh, oh yeah they would dig out the eggs and put them into a, ba a bag and then take them to the uh, turtle hatchery station. Uh, so to incubate them, them and you yeah. know. Yeah, we called them the turtle police. Huh. Oh nice. <laughs> now we do have we do have I would I would say probably similar turtle police. Uh, at a couple of the, the resorts, uh, they have turtle information booths and uh, you know, people that will that will keep you away from the turtles. And uh, even out here you will see um, some turtles will have uh, will have numbers that have been painted on their back. Okay. Oh, and as I'm stepping through this deep water, I'm looking out for urchins. Is there? They're down there. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, people will keep track of the turtles and monitor their health um, because a uh, turtle, speaking of, we'll see this little guy over here, uh, these Hawaiian green sea turtles if they're healthy and they're in the wild, will live for 70 to 90 years. Oh, wow. We just watched Finding Nemo this morning. And they're, oh, nice. They're like uh -huh. turtles that live 100 years old. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's a long time, huh? Yeah. I can't tell if I'm seeing any whales or my screen is dirty. Ha ha ha. You really want to see a whale? <laughs> Yeah, I'm keeping my eyes out. I haven't seen any any uh, whale activity really yet, but is that a guaranteed uh, thing if you go out on a boat that uh, they're out there all the time? Well, um, you know when when they do when they do run the whale tours, um, at least the, the the person that I go with, uh, they do they do guarantee that you're going to see a whale. Um, now, the one thing that's not guaranteed is going to be how active um, that those whales are. Mm. So uh, a, a lot of times late into the season, which, which we're getting late into the season now. Well, that's a good shot. Um, a lot of times late into the season, uh, the whales aren't quite so plentiful because they'll, you know, they'll start heading back up to Hawaii. All right. He's moving. <laughs> He's gone. Oh yeah. Didn't need the way home. And go. And let me tell you, those turtles can move quickly. 
when when you're out in the water, um, if if you get too close to one of them and they don't like you around, um, they will book it. You know, I think that they can swim. I think they were saying up to twenty something miles an hour. Oh, that's awesome. And they can and they can just turn on the speed too. Now, if you're lucky, and I haven't had it happen, but uh, Kristen, uh, my girlfriend, when we were out here snorkeling, had a turtle that just looked at her, got this, uh, in, you know, a curious look on his face, and then came and followed her around um, for about 40 or 50 feet. So this turtle just came and, and, and hung out with us when we were snorkeling. You want to talk to <laughs> Which, which is really what you're going for, you know. If the if the turtles and stuff come up to you, um, that you know that is the end all be all because you don't want to go out and chase them because they'll run away. And I've seen some, you know, I've seen lots of lots of kids that, that love to play and chase a turtle uh, in the uh, in the ponds. And you know, when you're a kid, you, know, you you learn the lessons eventually that if you just sit, then the turtle will hang out with you. <laughs> if you chase the turtle, the turtle will try to get away. Kind of like cats. Sorry. Exactly, yes. <laughs> you ever seen a turtle? Yeah. We're going to go out and see this one more guy that's out in the shallows here. So now some of these tide pools are big enough that uh, when the water goes down, you'll see some uh, spear fishermen out here because they will be taking advantage of the fact that uh, some bigger some bigger stuff gets uh, gets stranded in the tide pools. And they'll come out and grab some stuff for uh, for lunch. Huh. Good idea. We got another, another guy hanging out right in front of us here. So if this was uh, summertime conditions, I'd be fine walking out into this little pool here on the edge because we have, oh, one, two, three, four, oh, five, oh, half a dozen or more turtles <laughs> right out in here. And, uh, Other load. Yep. You know, and this is just on the edge, but as you'll see... Kind of from from nothing, then we'll get a little bitty set that's coming in here, and uh, we have rogue waves. So occasionally you can just have a really big wave that appears out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So you really want to be careful. Got a guy climbing over a shallow spot there. <laughs> yeah, I always used to put a garbage bag inside my camera bag and keep everything in that because it, it wasn't hard to get busy doing something and then the tide would come in and oh yeah get a bag full of wet cameras yep mm -hmm. again just keeping my eye on the horizon here yeah as soon as you move away from the waves it really clears up because the bandwidth is trying to keep up with all those waves oh but if you gotcha if it has a clear uh, section without too much, too many waves in the foreground, it gets really clear. Gotcha. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Half and half. So when I come out to look for whales from the shore, this is the point right here that I like to pop out to. You can kind of view around the corner a little bit. 
because we're in a little, we're in uh, Puaco Bay. Oh, I caught the wave perfectly. Great shot, Tony. Very nice. <laughs> it's like you're a pro. I'd like to uh, tell everybody that's watching that Dominic has the uh, most famous hand and finger in, uh, on the internet from all the pointers. <laughs> Dude, there you go. <laughs> There's the thumb. <laughs> Hold that. Go get it. Oh. There we go. <laughs> and, and my and my shadow's not my shadow's getting there. <laughs> yeah, your shadow's getting famous too. <laughs> it's got some work. It's got some work to get to Broadway. Practice, practice, practice. Right. <laughs> Isn't that how you get to Broadway? Karen Karen Hutton did that. She was uh Doing something for us out in the in the desert and uh, was striking all kinds of poses with her shadow. It's great. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, uh -huh. there, now you can make out those those turtle shells up there. Oh, I see. I think you see those. Okay. Yeah. Turtle shells. So this whole area that I mentioned, Puaco Bay, goes all the way back as we look right into the sun. Uh, we have the harbor, which is going to be way back in that right corner. So that's where a lot of kayaks and uh, boat tours will come out from. Oh, yeah. All right. In the distance. Oh, and hopefully this, this works, but right a little bit left of 12 o'clock. Let's see if we can see anything. Um, way out there, I just saw a, uh, the, the back of a humpback. Oh, goodness. Let's see. And, and again, if we see anything, it's just going to be a little dot. We have some action mm. right out there. And they are, they are way out there. Talk to your buddy and see if we could do a trip sometime. That, that would be cool. For oh, yeah. Time. some For the next time you're out in Hawaii. Yeah. Well, now, we are at the, we are at the tail end, unfortunately, of the, uh, of the whale season. And uh, I, I mistimed it. it. It was my fault. I, I had some, uh, <laughs> I had some minor, minor uh, medical stuff I was going through. And uh, we're past that, so next year we hope to hit up the uh, turtle season in full, uh, in full swing, or the, the whale season in full swing. Well, I'm going to see if I can zoom in. I don't really have a big lens on, on the camera today, but we'll see if we can catch some, some breaches or any movement out there. You've got a lot of turtles in front of you there. Watch oh, yeah. That's really cool. Uh, like I said, you know, when you can time their little heads popping up. <laughs> got two performing right there. Yeah, you know, I see a little splash or two, but again, they're way, those whales are way on the far side there. So we'll walk around this point and see if anything uh, comes up a little closer or not. And we'll get out over there. Oh, no, I think. I've got a... It's going to be straight through it. Right, so again, just moving slow through the through the rocky water here, keeping an eye out for those urchins. Step on one of those, and then the photo walk would have to end pretty abruptly. <laughs> Somebody sent me one of these rigs with the three different lenses on it to test out. I don't yeah, know. I haven't tried it how to see how it Little shell pieces. We'll have to. Uh, 
I'll send one to you and you can test it for me. Oh, the little lens kit for the cameras? Yeah, yeah there's this kind of free lens turning thing. Ah. You can go from close up to wide angle. You see. Oh, that's cool. You can put different, you put it better use than me. Cool. I, so never I know we're it. never going never never. to get them on camera, but there's some bigger fish there. here. I never go anywhere, I just sit in front of the computer. <laughs> Wow, that is just a gorgeous morning. That's beautiful. We can hear the waves. Very nice. Yeah, really, really lucked out, you know, on these beautiful mornings. Like we were saying during the, the last walk, we really had a bout of, uh, of uh, rainy weather. But it definitely seems like we are past that and on onto some normal normal Hawaiian weather. Hey Jamie. Maybe in here. Better, better late than never. <laughs> <laughs> well we will uh, we'll definitely get another couple turtle spots in here. <laughs> So in here, as we as we settle down, you can maybe start to see we have a couple little schools of fish in here. Ooh. Oh, oh, and some big bumblebees. Yeah, now you can probably start to see a little movement in here, and then just down to our left, we have some some other little fish. Get close without them freaking out. <laughs> the little fish. You see nice if you could catch lunch for yourself, Dominic. You know, I I I am going to start figuring out stuff like that. Now, let me tell you, I am I am up for learning how to spearfish. Or fish, fish, you know. Yeah. We used to use snares when I was a kid, a long pole with a snare on it. Oh yeah, you know, net fishing is is big out here. So this I'm guy is slightly elite. Looking the other way. Oh, look at the elevation place. Oh, wow. Yeah, some of the shells are really just, just beautiful. You know, and so uh, he'll, he'll just sit here and, you know, and munch on the algae and, and either take a nap or eventually make his way back over that seawall. And... Uh, and get out for a swim. There he goes. You know, these guys are, are pretty tough. Um, you know, they're crawling around and, and getting, getting banged on uh, all of this lava rock all day long. So, uh, so they do have very, very tough shells, uh, but we also always try to avoid contact with turtles because the, the oil that's on our hands will, will naturally uh, wear away at their little protective coating. They kind of have a little slime coat that keeps them healthy and so we always try to avoid them. Now I have been bumped by a turtle before when you're when you're sitting in a sitting in a tide pool minding your own business and not paying attention. Uh, occasionally a turtle will bump into you. <laughs> and let me tell you, that is a that is a frightening, or well, not frightening, it is a startling, <laughs> startling thing 
being bumped into by a turtle. <laughs> Now I'm already trying to to plan some of the uh, plan some of the walks for next time I'm in Hawaii, and uh, there's one place, Kiholo Bay. Uh, it's also sort of nicknamed Turtle Bay, which it's it's quite a little hike to get to. But we'll see if we can add that on the uh, on the list next time. This guy moves back out into the sun here. That's a great shot. Who's that? Uh, uh, power source. Yeah. Dominic and uh, the people taking some still shot. <coughs> excuse me, sh shots. Was <coughs> post them on the event. <coughs> So you'll be able to see those later. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's uh, head back down uh, towards our our chair spot here. Oh look. Okay, we're gonna oh. we're going to keep our eye on the horizon one more time here. <coughs> Now we're looking for kind of some white splashes way off in the distance there. Normally when you see see one or two white splashes, uh, you'll see a little bit. Yep, I just saw a, uh, a head bob and they're, they're over in this direction. You know, again, from this distance, we'll, we'll probably just see the big splashes if they happen. Uh, but what's going on when, when the whales breach, because humpbacks are, are known for being very uh, acrobatic, um, when they're little, uh, like I said, they are just playing around and, and learning the behavior for later on. But the big displays that you see, um, when you have the big, oh, there's a spout. And the little head bob, all right, they're sort of moving in this direction from where they were a little bit ago. Now. So we're just going to keep our eyes on the horizon here. So when the when the big whales uh, get together, when the males get too close to each other, that's when a lot of the action really starts to happen um, because they are being territorial. So a lot of people think that the whales are, are playing or just having fun in the water. And while that's true for the little calves, uh, the male humpbacks, uh, to them, it's all about uh, securing the right mate and, and keeping their territory. So when there's a family group or there's a male that's maybe with a, a, a female and some calves, um, when another male gets closer, that's when you'll start to see big tail flops where they, they'll take their tail and just smack down on top of the water really strong. Um, also breaching where they try to get up out of the water uh, and land with as big of a splash as possible. Um, the, the theory behind it being that if you make, you know, whoever makes the bigger splash is obviously the, uh, uh, the dominant male. And, oh, just saw a little humpback ridge right out at 12 o'clock. I'll try and again get some get some photos up on the uh, for this as well. I'll get us some turtles. But uh, but yes, yeah, so when the males compete, uh, that's when the uh, that's when the big splashes happen. Uh, also, a a female, uh, a mother or a nurse, will also make big splashes and big displays when uh, when a male gets too close to their kids. Mm. So they're, they're trying to say, stay away from the family, you know, or this place is mine. Now, okay. in the event page, um, I posted a photo from yesterday, um, which you can zoom in on. 
and you can see it is a it's a flipper and a tail shot. And then just to the right of that flipper and tail, uh, there's also a, a, another spout. Well, you broke the record for turtles today, that's for sure. Oh, yes. You crushed it. <laughs> yes. Now, I think we can't, can't get much luckier than we were with the turtles today. Now, if we could get lucky with these humpbacks, that would be that would be the kicker. How close to shore do they come? Well, you know, I mean, I've seen. It depends on the beach area. You know, here we're lucky because there, there's there's a drop off to some deeper water there. So sometimes when we're at at 69. Uh, which is just over to our right. It's uh, Wailea. Um, sometimes you'll see them three, four hundred yards offshore. I think I've and seen a couple of splashes out there, Dominic. Are you seeing anything? Yep. There, there, there's, there's quite a bit of activity. You'll see some. Uh, yeah, I can see some. It from here. Yeah, there they go. Yeah. I can see little white flashes right on the horizon line there. Yeah, you will see when when you see the uh, the white flashes. Sometimes that's the whale spout. It'll look mm -hmm. like a little geyser out there, and then it'll float off into some mist. Um, when they come up next to you and breathe, I think that exhale is uh, in excess of 100 miles per hour, <laughs> and it is about the worst smelling fish smell. <laughs> 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 that, uh, that, that I've ever had a chance to smell. <laughs> and I've been in some pretty fishy marinas and harbors, but uh, let me tell you, whale breath is a whole different thing. Oh, boy. And it, and it, it is startling as heck, too. <laughs> uh, they say over on, uh, over on Maui uh, sometimes, because... This is this is a big whale circuit area between Maui uh, and and the Big Island, but they have some fishermen that are you know are nighttime fishermen or kind of sleeping out in their in their kayaks or their longboats, and that these whales will just surface right next to them and take a huge breath, <laughs> and keep the fishermen up all night or at least on their toes. So I'm not seeing anything right now. So uh, the whales normally, if they're just moving along, you know, they'll breathe every, depending on if they're moving really, really quick, they'll just breathe as they're moving along on top of the surface. But when you see the tail flip, so when the, when the humpback comes up and then the tail comes up after it, you can normally tell that they're gonna they're diving down and will be down for anywhere from all seven to maybe ten minutes. Wow. And and they can cover quite a bit of distance um, in that time. So when they go deep, you never really know if they're gonna come up in the same spot or if they're gonna be a couple hundred yards away. Hmm. When they're at their normal moving rate, whales will swim at around three to six miles per hour. Uh, if they're feeding, uh, they'll move much slower at about 1.6 to 3 miles per hour. But if they need to uh, cover distances, uh, then they can go at speeds of up to 30, even 40 miles per hour. Wow. Now, the humpbacks that we have here... Um, when they're here, they are not eating any food. So they, they come all the way to Hawaii, uh, and they are here just to breed. And some people say that's because the food is too expensive in Hawaii anyway. <laughs> Which, if, if you have ever been out here, you know is true. Wow, there's a great shot. Another great guy right here. 
So the whales that we see here are one of two uh, major pods of whales uh, in the world. Oh, and I just sewed. So I said we never know how far they're going to go. I just saw a tail way over there. And there's a little humpback now. Like I said, I'll zoom in and see if I can grab a shot or two. I want to look at the turtle, but I don't want to miss a <laughs> but I don't want to miss a whale. <laughs> so uh, to get back these uh, humpbacks, when they are in travel mode, uh, they will travel uh, a total of almost 3,100 miles. And they will do that nonstop until they get up to Alaska. So if anyone's uh, you know ever ever read about or seen the photos of the uh, the humpback whales that are in Northern California and off the coast of uh, Washington and Oregon, uh, that's where these whales pass by. Oh, yeah, a big pelican swim hanging out right there too. Yeah. So those whales uh, will travel by the Pacific Northwest two times a year, and they'll go up to Alaska, which is where they eat. So in Alaska, they will they will gain all of the calories and all of the fat uh, that they'll live on for about six months when they when they swim all the way down here to Hawaii. Well, with that segue, I'll say we we're planning a virtual photo walk from Alaska doing some dog sledding, so stay tuned and I'll let you know when that's going to happen. Oh, awesome. Now I think they just, uh, did they just have the Iditarod recently? A couple of weeks ago, yep. A couple of weeks ago. Right. And they've had very little snow, if you can believe that. We've got it all. <gasps> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay, right here to our right. We have a beautiful humpback and it was just a little Little breach, so we're gonna we're gonna see his back show up somewhere here. I'm guessing. Oh, the waves are hitting me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna stay we're gonna stay right here. And he was sort of moving. Oh my goodness. Oh, I have a little kid's toy of a whale or something on a stick, and then you could just reach out and have it going by. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he was he was moving fast, or she, I'm guessing. Oh, right there, right there. So it looks like we got two of them. And they are about straight out there. You know, it's almost impossible on the phone. We'll have to look at your pictures from the telephoto. Let me see if I can get some. Oh, my hands were shaking. He was he was maybe a hundred yards right offshore here. No way. That close. They're actually they're actually right right there. I can see some uh, some bubbles from them. Oh, that's just too cool. Got there a little bit left of center now. And we're looking just for two little fins and humpbacks.
Hey, Frank. Right, I know as soon as I move, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna flip out. Oh, sorry, turtle. <laughs> uh oh. This is what I'm saying when you when you're walking out. Sometimes you forget. You know, you got turtles right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> when the whales show, but we will pop right back up here. Keep an eye out for that rogue wave, or you're gonna get wet. <laughs> This is the earliest you've been out, and you really nailed all the turtles this time. Oh, well, good, good, good. Maybe it's something to do with being uh, up at uh, 6 or 7 in the morning. Ha, 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 5.30. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> so, so as we've gotten out here, uh, now that we're near the edge, I mentioned that, you know, back then, uh, or back closer by the time we see the shells, they're in pretty bad condition. So, yeah. Oh, pretty. This nice guy here. Now he's got a he's got a little uh, he's got a little creature in here, and I've heard they can sort of stick you. So I don't want to mess with him too much. But beautiful little example there. Coming up on a couple minutes here, so we're going to keep our eye on the horizon here for some of the sea creatures. And we'll throw him back in the ocean there. Looks like those those two were covering some distance. Do you ever do any kayaking and things like that? Oh, I do. I do. I, I love to kayak. Um, you know, normally normally I'll I'll do a rental because I don't have a kayak myself. Um, but this trip we had. Uh, had a whole bunch of work to do, so I uh, didn't didn't get in the kayak this time. That would make a nice uh, trip just to have the uh, take the phone to the top or someplace a little dry and and be able to bop around in among the coral reefs. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Wow, so I'm guessing they were. They must have been moving pretty quickly. I think you're out of luck. But as soon as you turn away. <laughs> oh, I mean, he was he was right there. My hands were shaking. It was that was probably the closest onshore sighting I've had. That's cool. Now we do have now these now these are two separate groups of them. Because we still have on the far right down this way, we have a number of blow spouts popping up just offshore. But the ones we were looking out for were over in this direction. We'll give them just another couple more minutes and see if they're anywhere close. You're just dying to get a great shot of a whale. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> man. You know, now, now photography-wise, on my very, very first trip out on a, on a boat to look at whales, I uh, had to uh, use the head and, and, and came, came back out on board uh, on deck. And I was standing up, walking along the side, and this male humpback 
did a full breach, did one of these where it comes out of the water oh, no. and the full no. arch. And I just, from the hip, I wasn't even looking through the uh, looking through the viewfinder. From the hip, I just lifted the camera and g g g g g, and got five shots of him. And I got the full like just breaching out like this, arching. Oh wow! And uh, and while it's it's my favorite shot, and a lot of people they'll go out on their first whaling, sh you know, and not even see a whale. You'll see a little tail, you'll see some humpbacks, um, but it's from the hip, it's a perfect shot, and it was with a little bitty camera that I won't be able to make a print off of. No. <laughs> so ever since then, I've been hunting that shot, and I uh, just have yet to get it. Ah, so that guy now, okay, we've sort of lost him. So they're over there now spouting and I see a little bit of a uh, little bit of a hump back here. So later on this week um, when I'm out and about if I have a bigger lens on I'll try and get some shots of these guys. Yeah. And, if, you, uh, if you get anywhere near something like that that's going on just ping me and we'll go we'll just sounds go good. hell or high water we'll just go. Yeah. Because we have, we have three groups of them. There's, there's one more out in the middle, one off the point, and then that group to our left. And I don't see anything else this close. Ah. Well, guys, I think we've had a, uh, had a pretty darn good, good day here today. I think I'm coming up on my uh, coming up on my, my hour twenty of uh, of battery life. You are indeed. That's a gorgeous uh, gorgeous photo walk, and the, again the transmission with the Verizon equipment was perfect. The Verizon jetpack and uh, very good. Rock on! Well, I'm glad everything came in clear, and I'm glad you guys could all all join us today. Again, Thank we're here you. on the, the Big Island, and thanks for all of your, your questions and comments, and we'll get some photos up on the, uh, on the site here pretty soon. Thank you, Dominic. Awesome. All right. Thanks again. You guys all have a good day back there. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.